the Lord. Aren't you glad he picked you up and he turned you around? Praise the Lord. We have so much to be thankful for this morning, don't we? Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Good to see each and every one of you. 
Okay, before we get started, I want to, first of all, welcome any of our first-time guests that are here at the Fairlawn Church of God. It is so good to have you this morning, and if you are visiting with us for the first time, after service, we would like to meet with you and greet you. We have a little gift that we would like to give to you, and it's in the hospitality room. It's to my right, your left, right over there. That'll be right after service this morning. Okay, first of all, before we get started, we want to wish a happy anniversary to Joey and Lisa Shepard. Today is their anniversary. And they have been married 39 years. Isn't that awesome? Yes, so happy anniversary to both of you. And also, today is Joey Shepard's mom's birthday. And Sister Shepard's is 89 years old today. And she is here with us, right? Right back there, yes. Happy birthday to her. We're so happy to be able to celebrate with you all today. And then I'd like to read a card. This is from Pastor Timmy, and he said, Thank you for your generous giving to the Flawless Youth Group fundraiser and various offerings. Thanks to your giving, we are able to take, now listen to this, 15 people to Winterfest this year, and it's completely free. Can we praise the Lord for that? So thank you so much for your giving to the youth. They're going to have a wonderful time. And I just want to give you one more thing, and then I'm going to get into announcements, okay? We want to thank, for, thank everyone who participated either by walking or donating for the Walk for Life. The Fairlawn Church of God raised $2,170 for the Pregnancy Resource Center. So thank you so much. Okay. Got some announcements here this morning. Wednesday, we're going to finish up our series on faith through the fire. And I'm so thankful that we can have faith through the fire. And then we want to pray for our youth. They'll be leaving Friday for Winterfest. And we're just praying that God will bless them greatly, pour out his spirit on them, and do a great work on them. So remember them as they leave for Winterfest on Wednesday. And Saturday, the kids' yard sale is going to be from 7 a.m. to noon. And if you have any donations that you would like to bring, please bring them this week because they need them by uh, this Saturday. And also, if you can help in any way, see Pastor Amy. If you can help do anything, they, they would appreciate your help. So let's remember the kids' yard sale. Next Sunday, we start our new membership class and it will be held in the hospitality room. If you're interested in becoming a member of the Fairlawn Church of God and want to attend our new membership class, there's a sign-up sheet there in the back. Please do so, because like I said, we will be starting uh, next Sunday. All right. And uh, next Sunday, we will begin also our spring revival, and we're looking forward to that. Amen. Reverend Rick Larcy will be with us, and... Sunday morning service will be 11 a.m., and then we'll come back at 6 p.m. that evening, and then we'll be having services Monday through Wednesday, 7 p.m. So let's make plans to attend this revival. Amen. How many of you would like to be revived in your spirit? Praise God. I tell you, we're living in a day and time when we need it. Amen. So make plans to be at revival. I think this is all the announcements that I have to make, but we have, we're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer if you want to stand. And I've got a lot of prayer requests this morning that we want to pray about. But I'm so thankful that we can take these needs to the Lord because we serve the God who can do anything. Amen. We want to remember, continue to pray for Doug Manuel. Remember him in prayer. Pray for Betty Ward. She did get to come home from rehab. Uh, she was supposed to come home yesterday. We want to pray for Vincent Surface. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Neil Vong's dad. He's still in ICU, right? And we want to continue to hold him up in the prayer. We want to pray for Anna Davis, Juanita Questenberry, John East. We want to continue to pray for Bobby and Judy McPeak. Both of them are battling the COVID virus. They have both been in the hospital, and they're really in need of our prayers. So we want to lift them up before the Lord. 
We want to pray for Josiah Davidson. We want to pray for Todd Horn. We want to pray for Brad Nelson, who's with us this morning. He'll be having surgery. It's Tuesday, right, Brad? And we want to remember him in prayer. It's good to have you here this morning with us. We want to pray for Pat Palmer. Uh, we want to pray for Sarah Coleman's family. Uh, I think they have the stomach bug, and they're in need of our prayers this morning. We want to pray for Robin Angle and Donna Alley. They're both not able to be here with us, so we want to lift them up in prayer. We want to continue to pray for Mary Kate. She has two doctor's appointments this week, and we just want to pray for her that she'll be able to get there and not have any problems and complications. Uh, Sherry Linkus has asked us to pray for her legs. She's still having difficulties, but we're going to hold you up in prayer, Sherry. And she's asked us to remember Diane Stage. She has... Um, cancer stage four so we want to lift her up in prayer and we also want to pray for Roy Moon he's able to be with us this morning but he's still in need of our prayers and we're going to pray for you brother Roy and lift these needs up before the Lord in prayer if you have a need this morning would you just lift your hand before the Lord and we're going to take these requests and we're going to give them to him and you know what we're going to see things happen thank you Kathy we're going to see things happen because we serve the God of all possibilities. There is nothing impossible with God. And you know what you and I need to do? We need to step out this morning in faith. Put our faith and our trust in the God who can do anything this morning. So let us go before him. Father, we are blessed to be in your sanctuary this morning. We have come here, Lord, in one mind, in one accord. Hallelujah. And that is to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, we've come in here today knowing that we serve the God who can do anything. That we can serve. We serve the God that can do that thing that looks impossible to man. But with God, it is not impossible. Hallelujah. Lord, you have heard every name that has been called out this morning. You have seen every hand that has been raised in this sanctuary God and Lord we bring these requests to you Lord we bring these needs to you Lord and we lay them at your feet hallelujah knowing God that you have the answer hallelujah we thank you and praise you Lord oh we give you glory this morning we serve the prayer answering God and in that name of Jesus that name that is above every name Hallelujah. All things are possible. Lord, we're looking forward to what you're going to do. We're looking forward, oh God, to the testimonies that are going to come back of what you have done. Father, we bless your name. We praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your house today, Lord. And Father, we pray that you would anoint and bless Pastor Marcus as he brings forth the word that you have placed upon his heart. And oh God, let us receive that word. Let us apply it to our lives, oh God. We thank you for your presence that is here, God. Lord, we give this service to you. We place it in your hands, Lord, and ask that your will and your way be accomplished today. Lord, if there be anybody here today or anybody that's watching my Facebook Live that doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray today would be the day, hallelujah, that they would give their heart and their life to you. That's why we're here, God. We want to see souls saved. We want to see lives changed. We want to see healings take place. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you're going to do here today in this service. We love you, Father, and we give you praise in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all of his children said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. We're going to get ready to receive our offering this morning. And we'll ask our ushers, if they would, to come on down. And it's such a privilege to be able to give unto the Lord. And like I've said many times, our church has been so faithful through this pandemic to have such a giving 
heart, and you have blessed so many people, and we just want to thank you so very much for your giving. The Fairlawn Church of God is a wonderful giving church, and we appreciate each one of you so very much. And we're going to ask Brother Edward, if he would, to ask the blessing over our offering this morning. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're going to ask the two outer sections here if you would stand and if you would exit towards the wall and come around and drop your offering in.
thought Pastor's message was a little strange when he first told me, we're going to be talking about you're so weird. I'm like, well, Pastor, you know that part of the worship service where you say, musicians, come back up if you want? Well, they ain't taking it too good. We ain't coming back up. <laughs> you're by yourself. <laughs> But how many gets what he's saying? We are people set apart for our Lord Jesus Christ. And to this world, that makes us weird. And you know what? I'm all right being weird. <laughs> Father God, I just invite your presence in this place to have your will and your way. And God, if the world thinks we're weird, then so be it. Because God, I'd rather be weird for you than a million bucks in this world. So Lord, I just pray. God, if loving you and serving you is weird, then God, I want to be weird.
hands of heaven and sing that chorus again. Because when you speak, Lord, when you speak, God, oh, how many wanted to move in this place this morning? And speak to us, we pray, oh, God. change me, change what I see, change what I seek, change the desire of my heart that it would line up with what God wants for us. Is that your prayer today, this morning? Speak, Lord. Move. Come in the room and change us, we pray. Bless us, God. Touch this congregation in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen and amen. Give the Lord a big ovation of praise in this house this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Let me say thank you to our, our musicians. And we uh, certainly miss Sister Donna and, and Sister Robin today. But I'm so thankful for musicians like Pastor Mikey. Little Nick over there on the drums. They can just jump right in and fill in and worship the Lord with their anointing and their gifting and their talents. Would you give them a big round of applause? Let's let them know how much we appreciate all of our musicians, our, our guitar players and everybody that's a part, all of our singers, we're just so blessed. We are blessed at the Fairlawn Church of God with, with good talent. I told Pastor Mikey this morning when I found out that Sister Don and Robin were sick and not able to be here, I said, this is one of those few times when I am glad I'm not the music minister any longer. The few times. That I'm glad for that because I, I did not have that ability and that gifting that I could hop on the piano. So I usually struggled when, when those things happened. But thank God for wonderful, talented musicians that lead us in worship today. 
I want to go into the ministry of the Word. It's great to see each and every one of you here today, and Pastor Joey and his entire family and his sweet little mama that's here with us today celebrating her 89th birthday. I hope I look as good as you do when I'm 89 years old. And I'm sure I will, because I believe I'm going to be in glory by the time I get to that age. Praise the Lord. I believe the Lord's coming back. That's a good place for somebody to shout amen. I believe it might, it could be today. How many is ready to meet the Lord? Anybody got your eyes on the skies this morning? To those that are looking, the Bible said, he shall appear. Praise God. I'm going to go right into the ministry of the word this morning. I'm going to continue in this sermon series. I heard Pastor Mikey allude to it that I have entitled, You're So Weird. The word weird being defined as strange, odd, or unusual. In other words, when we're weird, we act in a way or talk in a way or live in a way that is out of the ordinary or it goes against the norm. Can I tell you something, folks? That ought to be the very definition of the church. Because we don't act like the world. We don't look like the world. And we for sure do not live like the world. Because we might be in this old world. But how many of you know we are not of this world? Because our citizenship, it is not of this earth. But it's in that celestial city whose builder and maker is God. Building 429 sings a song that I like. It says, all I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. You can take this old world, but give me Jesus. How many can testify to that this morning? You can have this old world, but somebody give me Jesus. Because this is not where I belong. Can I tell you, when you realize this old world... It's not where you fit in. It'll make perfect sense why you don't look like or talk like or live like the majority. It'll make perfect sense why you're weird because most people have their minds set on the things of this world. But we have our minds set on things that are above. They're not on earthly things because this is not where we belong. How many can say amen today? Let's look at our text for this series from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. It says, but you are a chosen generation. Somebody say chosen. You're a royal priesthood. Somebody say royal. You are a holy nation. Somebody say holy. And a peculiar people. Somebody say peculiar Why? That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. There's a part of that text there that said you, we are holy. Holy means we have been set apart. There's a word that we use to describe that in the church. It's the word sanctification. Now let me tell you, we don't hear a whole lot of preaching about sanctification anymore. You know why? Because we're all right coming to church on Sunday and living like the world Monday through Saturday. We ain't got no problem having one leg in the church and one leg in the world. But I'm here to tell somebody that God wants to set you apart from the things of this world. He wants to consecrate us unto a special work. Let me explain the difference in salvation and sanctification. Salvation is a single, momentary act of regeneration. You pray a prayer. You invite Jesus to come into your heart and your life. And the Bible says that you are saved in a a moment, in an instant. You are changed. The old is gone. The new is here. and, And your name is recorded down in the Lamb's book of life. And you're given the privilege, the the right, the Bible says, to be called the children of God. But sanctification is not a one-time deal. Sanctification is an ongoing process. It's a lifelong process where we are continually being changed from who we are to who we want to be. How many know we got to deal with this old flesh every morning we get out the bed? That's why Paul said, I die daily. 
It means every day we're making a decision to take up our cross and follow Jesus. It means every day we're deciding to walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. It means every day we are being transformed more and more into the image of Jesus Christ. I like what Galatians chapter 2 verse number 20 says. For I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ Jesus who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, Paul said, I now live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Did you hear that, church? The life we're now living, we are not living according to the flesh. As a matter of fact, it's not even me who's living anymore, but it's Jesus on the inside. See, the old Marcus is gone, and there's a new man standing before you today who's been called, appointed, and anointed. I've been chosen and set apart from the world unto the work of God, and that's why I'm different, and that's why you are different today, because you've been set apart. We don't live like the world lives, because the life we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God. That's my constant prayer every day is that I'll become more and more like Jesus and less and less like the world. I wish somebody would shout amen. That's my most heartfelt plea. My plea this morning is more of him and less of me. More of Jesus. Less of me. That's what our series is all about. Learning that it's all right to be weird. It's all right. Matter of fact, it's, it should be what we're striving for is to be different. Because I don't believe God has called us to be normal. There's a lot of things in the world most people would consider to be normal. But I believe they're far different from the life that God has called us to. Last week we talked about time. How our view of time should be different because a perfectly normal view of time is that there's not enough of it. But according to Scripture, God has given us everything we need for a godly life. So that means we have enough time to do what God wants us to do. We just oftentimes spend more time doing what we want to do. See, another weird way of looking at time is living in the present. People are so busy worrying about tomorrow, fretting over yesterday, that they lose sight of the here and now. But I believe God wants us to live in the moment. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You shouldn't just be physically present, but you ought to be mentally and emotionally present as well. And finally, we got to learn how to honor the Sabbath. we got to learn as people how to take the time to rest. Because most people, you know what, we're addicted to accomplishment. We want more. We want bigger. We want better. But that is not necessarily the life that God has called us to here on earth. As a matter of fact, when it comes to possessions, earthly possessions, Jesus has dared us to be different. When it comes to money, he's dared us to be weird. You don't believe me? Let's look at the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Listen to what Jesus said. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth. Hello, somebody. Where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But he said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust cannot destroy, where thieves cannot break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Can I tell you something, folks? Everything about that scripture, 
goes against everything the world has taught you from the time you were born because the world says to get all you can get and keep all you can get your hands on. It's a rat race to make money, invest it well, cash it in, and store it up. But God said don't worry about storing up treasures here on this earth, but store up your treasure in heaven. I don't know about you, but that's where I want to lay up my treasure this morning is in that celestial city paradise today God said if you want to live a a blessed life then you have to learn how to give because he said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive man those kind of positions on money the world are going to look at and call you weird But that's all right. You know why? Because I believe normal is not working. Let me tell you a weird way for most of us to look at ourselves when it comes to money. And that's this. We are rich. Now, I know I just lost a few of you right there. I know a few of you. Just checked out on my message because you're convinced now that I'm preaching lies from the pulpit. You're probably thinking, you think I'm rich. Have you seen my checkbook? <laughs> have you seen my car? Have you, have you seen my house? Maybe I haven't seen those things, but here's the truth. I don't have to. Because just the simple fact that you own those things at all puts you, listen to this, in the top Five percent of the richest people in the world. Did you know that 50 percent of the world's population lives on two dollars a day, less than two dollars a day? Think about that for just a moment. We might not have a new car, but I bet every one of you rolled up into church today in one. We might not have the biggest house, but I bet most of you, all of us, probably have a roof over our head. We might not have the latest and the greatest tech gadgets, but I would bet that just about every person in this room has got a flat screen TV at home and a cell phone in your pocket. Did you know if you earn $45,000 a year, I know not everybody in the room Makes that much money, but there are many of you who do. 45000 a year. I figured it up. It's, if you don't work any overtime, 40 hours a week, 45000 a year is just a few dollars an hour more than what our minimum wage in America is about to go to. 45000 a year. You are in the top 1% of the wage earners in the entire world. We're rich. We just don't believe it. Why? Because rich is a moving target. It doesn't matter what we have. It's never enough. It doesn't matter what we have. We always want more. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth, he will never Be satisfied with his income. How many know that is normal? That's normal in our society. What we have is never enough. There's always somebody we qualify as being richer than we are, so that's always the standard that we're trying to live up to. But being rich, which all of us are, believe it or not, comes at a disadvantage. Because rich people are inclined to rely more on money and less on the Lord. See, if we're not careful living in America, we'll find it easier to put our trust in the almighty dollar than putting our trust in Almighty God. I believe that's why it's been printed on every piece of American currency as a reminder to you that it's not in money that you place your trust, but it's in God that we trust today. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 and 18 
says, command those who are rich in this world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope or their trust in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything we need for our enjoyment. Command them who are rich to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. See, it's not so much about what we have. It's about how we honor God, how we honor the Lord with what we've been given. Amen. Here's point number two. Another weird way to look at money. And I bet half of you go check out now. You don't need more. First Timothy chapter six. Verses 6 through 8. Godliness with, what's the word? It's another word you don't hear preached a whole lot in church, do you? Godliness with contentment. I mean, know what that means. You're satisfied with what you have. Godliness with contentment is great loss. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. Listen to this. But if we had food and clothing, then we ought to be content with that. Here's the problem in America. We have a hard time identifying and distinguishing between our wants and our needs. Because God has said he will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. But here's where we get tripped up. We try to take what God has supplied for our needs and we try to use that to supply our wants. And then we don't have enough left over to supply our need. And before you know it, we are upside down in our finances. Normal people are are overcome with the I need more, I want more, I've got to have more mentality. Normal people are so in debt that they're miserable because they're spending their whole lives trying to keep up with the Joneses down the street and it's killing them. 1 Timothy 6, 9, the next scripture says, people who want to get rich, listen to this, people who desire riches, they fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires, I'm reading this straight out of the Bible, that plunge men into ruin and destruction. And I don't know how you can get any plainer than that, folks, more and more. It looks good, but it is a trap. It will lead to harmful actions that will lead to harmful desires that will plunge you into ruin and destruction. That's why Paul said godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, you better believe that's weird. You better believe that goes against everything the world believes. But here's that's all right, because here's the truth. Normal is not working. How many can say amen? Normal people are drowning in financial pressure. Normal people are drowning in stress and tension. Normal people are paying other people to teach them the secret to debt-free living. Do you want me to give you the secret? I'll give it to you free of charge. Stop writing checks that your wallet cannot cash. In other words, stop spending more than you make. Stop living above your means. Learn to be content, satisfied where we are and with what we have. The Bible teaches when we're faithful in small things, we're faithful in little things, God then will bless us with greater things. Proverbs 15 and 6 said it's better to have little. You won't hear that preached too much. It's better to have little with fear for the Lord than to have great treasure and inner turmoil. Can I tell you, most folks that are buying and buying and buying, man, it looks good on the outside, but on the inside there is turmoil. Better to have little with fear for the Lord than have great treasure and inner turmoil. 
The world says more and more will make you happy. But let me tell you something, folks. It is an illusion. It's not real. We got to learn how to live to give and not live to gain. I'm closing with this, the last point, a weird way to talk about money and stuff. Possessions, earthly possessions in this life. Is you should always want to return the blessing. Return the blessing. 2 Corinthians 9.11 says you'll be made rich in every way. God will bless you. If he knows he can trust you with what he's given you, how many know the Lord will pour out a blessing? The Bible said that you can't even contain it. But there's a purpose behind it. It's not for you to store it up and pack it away and hide it for a rainy day. Here's the purpose. You'll be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, the Bible said your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Another, another version said you'll be blessed in every way. But notice the blessing really has nothing to do with you. Did you read anything about you in that scripture? No, you're going to be blessed. Why? So you can be generous on every occasion. And through your generosity, it's going to result in thanksgiving to God. Your blessing is meant to be shared. It's meant to be given. It's meant to be used to bring glory to the Lord. Your blessing should make you generous. Generous means freely giving. Not because I feel like I have to. Not because I feel like I'm obliged to. But I freely give. I freely share what is needed. Normal people, they do not look at their blessing in light of anybody else but themselves. See, normal people are only concerned about themselves when it comes to a blessing. But weird people know when you're blessed... You should return the blessing. I like what Winston Churchill said. He said, we make a living by what we get. We know we got to have money. We got to live. We got to survive. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life with what we give. Givers. There are three different kind of givers. If I were to give this to you quickly before we go home. Three different kind of givers, I believe. The first is spontaneous givers they see a need and they step up to meet the need they see a need and they they respond to it and there's nothing wrong with with those kind of givers except it's it's more reactive than it is proactive spontaneous then we have strategic givers strategic givers are people who make a plan They plan ahead. They do a a budget. And in the budget, they've already marked out money they can use to give away. Here's what Isaiah said. Generous people plan to do what is generous. They plan to do what is generous and they stand firm in their generosity. You know what kind of people plan to give money away? Tithers. You ain't got to shout. It's all right. I'll preach anyway. Tithers. They're the kind of people that are strategic givers. You know why? Because they make a plan ahead of time. I'm not going to pay Uncle Sam and pay my AEP bill and pay my phone bill. And then I'll see what I got left over. I'm going to strategically look at my budget and make sure first fruit is what the Bible calls it. The first part of my money It's going to come out of my check that I bring home. And I'm going to give to the Lord what the Bible says. Not what Marcus says. What the Bible said already belongs to him. It is holy to the Lord. They plan ahead. Strategic givers. And and the last kind of givers are sacrificial givers. Sacrificial givers. They don't give because it's running over. They don't give because they got so much they don't know what to do with it. They give when they don't have it to give. 
I thought about that widow that the Bible talked about when she showed up on the scene and threw those couple little coins in the treasury and all the people standing around, you know, looked at that small gift and thought, you know, it, it was really worthless. But Jesus corrected their thoughts when he said, you know what, this little lady, she gave more than everybody else. Because she didn't give out of abundance. She gave out of need. She gave everything she had. That is a sacrificial giver. They don't give because they have to. They give because they want to. They don't give out of, out of, out of abundance. They give out of necessity. Because giving isn't just something they do. It's who they are. That's what God has called us to be. That's how God has called us to view money. It's amazing that Jesus said you, can, you can't serve two masters. And of all the things he could have talked about, it was the Lord, God, and money. I'll never forget, back in 2009, we went to Kenya, Africa on a missions trip. Several of you, a couple of you were there with us when we went on that trip. Hard to believe it's been that long ago already. But we went there, and one of our, our primary missions was to help this orphanage, this boy's home, under the direction of Bishop Tony Kamande. And we were trying to supply the, about 40 kids, wouldn't you say, Kathy, somewhere thereabouts, about 40 kids, all boys, with their basic needs. We, we weren't going there, man, to give them, you know, Xboxes and DS and everything. Kid. No, we, were, we took... We took money and bought shoes and socks and, and a pair of pants for each little boy and a new t-shirt. We bought them a, a whole new outfit. And you think, do you think those kids were appreciative? That little boy you see there in my arms giving that pair of shoes, he about jumped out of my arms to run across the, the little dirt floor to get his pair of socks. I mean, we asked the, the little lady that was helping there, Lucy, I think was her name. We asked her, we said, Lucy, what, what can we do for these kids that, you know, that we want to do something special. We had a little bit of money left over. We want to do something special that these kids don't normally get. What would be something, I mean, super spiritual uh, or special that would just blow their mind? What can we do? She said, oh, I know just the thing. She said, a roll and a bottle of pop. And that's what we bought. Rolls and little soda bottles passed them out to those kids and man you would have thought it was the 4th of July but I remember they took us into a room sat us down and as I looked up on the table there was this little food sitting out there there was some sandwiches and some fresh fruit they had cut up we said Bishop what, what what's the food for and he said we're, we're going to feed you all today. I remember thinking, wait a minute. We cannot take, the, we don't need this food. These children, this orphanage, you're, you're trying to provide, I mean, their basic needs. We do not need that. You need to keep this food. We cannot eat it. And this, is, this is what he said and how he said it. Brother Marcus. He said, you've been so good to us. You've been such a blessing. He said, now we just want to return the blessing. I will never forget that until the day I die. Because return the blessing realizes that every good and perfect gift we have been the beneficiary of, we have received from the Lord, that God has been good to us. And that blessing is not meant for us just to hold on to it. It's just not about me. That blessing is to bless others, is to keep paying it forward and to be the light and the love of Jesus to a lost and dying world. That blessing is so that I can store up treasures in heaven. It ain't got nothing to do with my bank account here on earth, but I'm laying up treasures in glory. I'm returning the blessing every time I give unto the Lord. Every time I see a man on the street corner that needs a, a sandwich and a glass of milk or a soda, and I go do that in the name of Jesus, I am returning the blessing. That's how God wants us to view money today. Because if you want to be normal, if you want a normal life, just go ahead and do what normal people do. 
But if you want to be different, if you want to be extraordinary, you want your life to be extraordinary, then I want to challenge you to do something weird. Stand to your feet this morning all over this house today. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the giver of all things. We thank you, Lord, that the Bible says every good and perfect gift, it comes down from above, from our Father, the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because you have freely given, God, we pray that you would convict our hearts. Help us, Lord, to go against the grain, what the world would have us to believe is normal and to get all we can get and keep all we get, Lord, but that we would be willing to be generous with others. And you promise that when we do, that it will result in thanksgiving to the Lord. I want to ask you this morning, with your heads bowed, if there's anybody on the sound of my voice, maybe that doesn't know Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, and if I got to be honest with you, with the Lord today, with myself, I'd have to say I'm not living where I should be living. I'm not, I'm not living as close to the Lord as I should be living. There's some things in my life that, man, I need to repent of. I need to ask Jesus to come into my heart. And that, that's the first place I got to start is to accept Him as my Savior and confess Him as my Lord. Maybe you've never prayed a prayer like that. Maybe you have, but it's been a long time. And, You've drifted in relationship. I want you to know, man, God is married to the backslider. He loves you today with an everlasting love. And He's calling you. He's, he's beckoning unto you to come home, to give up that lifestyle, man, like the prodigal son, and come home to your Father. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I, I need to pray a prayer like that. Nobody's going to embarrass you. But I believe it, there, there, there's something we gotta, we got to admit. we gotta, we got to realize we're sinners and sin the Bible says separates us from God would you slip your hand up this morning anybody over the the sanctuary today God bless you I see your hand anybody else this morning say pastor I need to I need to pray a prayer like that and ask Jesus to be my Lord and forgive me of my sins anybody else before we pray I want to give you this opportunity if you're here this morning and you're not saved that you can be saved today Maybe there's some folks watching my Facebook Live. I just want to pray this prayer with everybody in the room. If you would, right where you are, would you say these words and just mean them from your heart? Would you say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner because the Bible tells me I was born in sin. What I need is forgiveness. What I need is a Savior. So I invite you to come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. Help me to be different. Set me apart from the world. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Your head's still bowed and your eyes closed. I want to ask a couple questions today. When we think about money, we think about finances. I know there are a lot of folks that are struggling financially. There are so many homes that, that split up, break up because of simple financial pressure. If you're here today and, and just between you and the Lord, again, nobody will embarrass you, but I, I just want to know who I'm praying for this morning. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need a financial breakthrough. I need the blessing of the Lord on my finances. There There's some things that maybe I've gotten upside down in and I just need the hand of God to bless me and help me to, to straighten this out, to give me the wisdom to know how to, how to move forward and the steps to take. I, I want the blessing of the Lord on my finances. If that's you this morning, would you just slip your hand up to the Lord? Amen. Just, just honesty. I see your hands. Yeah. Second question. If you're here this morning and you, you heard what I preached about just a moment ago, it was on strategic giving. And those kind of givers are what we call tithers. The Bible talks about that, that our income, the source of our increase, that 
10% of that is the biblical numerical value that, that God has asked us for, that he said belongs to him. Matter of fact, Malachi said it's so serious that when we try to hold back on God and we, we don't give him what is already his, the Malachi called it robbing God. And can I be honest, I, you know, not, not everybody, but I, I bet there are certainly probably some folks, if, if you're having trouble in your finances and you're not a tither, that may not be the only reason, but I can assure you that is one of the reasons. Because when we hold out on God, when we don't give Him what already belongs to Him, can I tell you, what, what you keep is not going to be blessed. But when you give God the 10% that belongs to the Lord and you, you keep that 90%, we, we can testify. Those of you that are tithers, you can testify. He will bless the 90% that is left over more so than if you have tried to keep it all. That's the way God, you cannot outgive God. That's why Luke said, give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I wonder how many this morning would say, Pastor, you know what? I, I feel, not because of what I've said, because of what the Word says, I, I feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit in my life that maybe I've not been putting such a priority on being a strategic giver, making a plan to give to God what is already His. But I want to step out in faith this morning and make a fresh commitment to the Lord that I'm going to go home and sit down and look at my budget, look at my, my income and figure out a way, map out a plan that I can be a first fruit tither. I want to give the Lord what is His and, and watch His blessings unfold in my life. If that's you and you feel challenged to do that again just between you and the Lord, but would you slip up your hand this morning and say, I, I want to do that today. God bless you. I see your hands. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I believe the Lord will reward you. He will bless you for your faithfulness in tithing and giving unto the Lord. The last question is this. How many of you can say, you know, the world has taught us so long that we should try to keep and keep and keep. And maybe, maybe I've lost sight of the fact that my life is really meant to give, to give away, to bless others. And I, I, I want to do what Winston Churchill said. I want to live to give. I want to make a life based on what I give to others. Whether it's, it's not just finances, but, but in all things, my talents, my gifts, whatever the Lord has blessed me with, however the blessing is, has unfolded in my life, I want to be able to give that away and share that with other people. How many would say this morning by show of hands, I want to live to give. Just slip your hand up. Amen. All over this house. All over this house today. Mikey, would you, would you sing that chorus this morning? It simply said, here's my heart. Here's my heart. Lord, I give it to you. I give to you. Would you fill it today, Lord? Fill it completely, Lord. With what you want me to do. What you want me to do. Take control. Take control. Fill my soul and fill my soul so that all may see, so that, all may see that I can be, that I can be like you. Is that your prayer today? Like Come on, lift your hands and pray that prayer. Here's my heart. Here's my heart. Tell him, here's my heart. I give to you. Give to you. Fill it completely, Lord. Fill it completely with what you want. What you want me to take do. control, take control, and feel my soul, and feel my soul, so that all may see. Here's what we want that I can be. I can, Lord, be I can be like I you. Come on, say this.
morning. I know there were a multitude of prayer requests today. So many needs that have gotten called into the church office. I wonder if you're here this morning and you just need a special touch from the Lord. You would like us to lay hands on you and pray for you. There's just something special. The Bible said if, you're, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. How many believe there's still power in prayer today? If you, if you need a special touch from the Lord and, and you'd like us to pray for you, perhaps you want to stand in for somebody that could not be here today. But they need a touch from the Lord. I'm going to invite you to just come down to the altar and find a place you can just spread out for a moment and Pastor Joni, myself, Pastor Joey, any of the elders will come around and lay hands on you and just ask the Lord to touch you, whatever the need may be. Ask the Lord to touch you in a special way and to do in your life what, what only He can do. In Jesus' name. Come on, sing that again. Pastor Mikey, sing, Here's my heart. Here's my heart. I give to
necessary. God, we know you can do it right here, right now. Lord, we're not beyond believing the realm of the impossibilities because what is impossible with man is still possible with God. So we pray you would touch his life, Lord, in a supernatural way. God, heal him, Father, we pray. If you choose to use the method of doctors and surgery, then we believe that still yet you will get the glory. We still believe, God, that even through the surgery, the name of Jesus will be
on giving this morning and I want you to know that everything you give goes directly to the mission and every time we spend something in fact before we left we were able to put together a feeding ministry for castaway children there was one that died just before Easter Sunday she was so hungry she ate styrofoam to kill the hunger at three years old. But the beautiful thing was, I told the lady in charge of these children, I said, I was with you at Christmas when you translated and we prayed the salvation prayer with that child. And I know where she's at today. And today she's with Jesus Christ. But before I left, because of what you gave, we were able to put together a pantry, an open pantry, that if anyone was hungry, they can come and get something to eat. A weekly feeding because of another church who came to be a part is now implemented every Saturday. These children will be fed. And Compassion International came to be a part as well. God put it together in less than a week. We did it on Saturday before I left. And then this Saturday, 23 families 23 families. We figure three people to each family. That's almost 70 people. Were ministered to, blessed, and fed because of your giving. Thank you so much, church, for all that you do. We love you. We appreciate you. And we praise God for you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all that you are and all that you have given us, Lord. Father, thank you for the blessing that you are to each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you for the Fairlawn Church of God and every soul that comes here, Lord, and that gives of their time and of their money and of their efforts, Lord. Father, thank you for all that you are. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come into our lives, to walk with us, to be with us, to share with us every day. Lord, we just thank you for all that you are. Father, that you would go with us as we leave out of this place today. That we might be a blessing to any and all who see us, Lord. That we might share the gospel with a broken world. That all might know that Jesus Christ is King. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you've given. We love you, Lord Jesus. Bless you.